Toronto! Oh, come on, guys. It's the grand finals. Let me hear you. Toronto! You know, way back when, long time ago, back in 2018, I had the honor of going out in front of my home crowd and welcoming everyone here to the Overwatch League Grand Finals. And I am so glad that six years later, I still get to do the same thing with you wonderful people each and every time. So just like we did back then, and just like we did this morning, I have a question. Are you ready? No, 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 no. I said, are you? Houston Outlaws! You have Happy, Pelican, Burner, Shoe, Violet, and Coach Neko! Houston have been so strong this playoff, the best we've ever seen from them. I think that they are ready. Yes, they lost to the Florida Mayhem before, but they are stronger. They have learned, they have developed. This coaching staff has won championships before, and I think they're poised to do it again. They've made the adaptations. They've added Bernard in at the last second, and I think it's exactly the ticket to take out the Florida Mayhem. Pelican is confident, and I am too. Give it up one more time for the Houston Outlaws! And their opponents, the Florida Mayhem! RuPaul, Choron, someone, Checkmate, Merit, and Coach Gumba. Once again, put your hands together for the Florida Mayhem. For so long, for so many seasons, the Florida Mayhem has been building towards this moment. This is the roster that was supposed to bring them home the championship trophy. Throughout this entire season, they've adapted. They've played multiple compositions. And finally, here, they find themselves in the grand finals. One chance to take it all home. Folks in the arena, one more time. Give it up for both teams, the Houston Outlaws and the Florida Mayhem! Coaches, fist bump at the center of the stage. And let's get this show on the road. your casters for this game. They've done it once, they've done it again, and they're doing it one more time. Give it up for the legendary Uber and Mr. X. Oh, man. All right, yeah, that money's on the way to your PayPal, GB. Thanks for that one, mate. This is a rivalry that has played out multiple times over the course of this year. Two of the most electrifying teams in the West. Two wins apiece. Now it's time to settle this once and for all. So Florida comes in and they seem like they're the clear favorite really throughout this event, right? Someone, you know, our MVP, feels like he can play like every tank. You're looking across the different lineups, like Smurf, I think, can kind of do all that. But the Outlaws, you pick up Bernard for moments like this, right? He can come in, play Sigma, play D.Va, play all these different types of tanks. We're adding him into the mix definitely changes things up. The, in, the impact is instant. Yes. It's just to add water, Bernard's like a gigantic sea monkey with gravitational abilities. He comes into the server and all of a sudden there's a different facet well, to this Houston Outlaws team with these Sigma and at times D.Va play as well. It's because you're not asking him to come in and do too much, right? You're not asking him to come in, play all these different tanks, come in, specialize in the stuff that we know you're good at. It just so happens a lot of that stuff is the things that teams are playing here. The narrative around this Houston team was coming into the playoffs that were lost. They don't know what to go for. Yeah. The dive meta's not working out. Fearless has been coming out on Doomfist. It's looked mid, it's looked average, it's looked wishy-washy. But they've shown us now after challenge after challenge, they've earned the right to renew this rivalry one more time against this Florida Mayhem team who is nothing short of Terrifying, Matt. This backline, Rupa on Chorong, man, it is ferocious. Someone is a well-deserved MVP. And we've just seen what this front line can do. We could not have asked for a better finals here at our playoffs. So everybody, let's get ready.
one last time, it's pen to paper in the rivalry between the Houston Outlaws and the Florida Mayhem. It all kicks off on Antarctic Peninsula. And what I think people liked about the Florida Mayhem all season long, as they never had these like peaks and valleys like some other teams, right? Always consistent, it seemed from the beginning of the season, you knew this team was going to contend all the way to the end. You knew whatever meta was going to crop up, they had the answers to it. Which I think when you have a playoff patch and things start to get a little bit dicey, that's what you want to see. Make some noise, Toronto, it's on! This is something really interesting. So the Mayhem have been playing a ton of like Sigma-based compositions, right? And with Bernard in the game, you know that that's probably what the Outlaws are going to play. They feel like they're the best Reinhardt team here at this event, even with the London Spitfire here. That they believe that this Reinhardt comp is the answer to the thing that they're pumping out. Jack foreshadowed it yesterday, saying we expect to maybe see a Ryan Miro, but choose already a casualty merit. With surgical accuracy, plucks him out of formation. Now without the Yardi, your options are limited, but happy fires back. It's a tap grenade straight at Merritt's dome. Now the Reinhardt shield gets a little bit low and someone needs to give some space. The Outlaws have a chance to push up here. Happy inside tank configuration. The May wall's thrown up and Happy is able to play back towards the point. The Outlaws take control first. Yeah, I mean, Viola doing a tremendous job, right? He's the only support there at the time, keeping everybody on the Outlaws topped up. It's the Outlaws, they do have that bash in the mix, right? Once he gets into wheels mode, that damage output is so much on that Reinhardt shield. And getting rid of Mirror for essentially free with that tack grenade is huge. Florida though, wrap around, they search it oh. but Happy's there again! Make it double! Rupal can't do anything, riddled with bullets! His corpse goes flying and the Outlaws are throwing haymakers out of the gate! Well, fortunately for RuPaul, he saw that grenade bounce off the wall and come around the corner. It's just his two teammates did not. He actually tries to save him. He has that regenerative burst, pops up, but he is a behind line of sight behind the pillar. So didn't receive the healing from that Baptiste ability where this is a good start for the Outlaws. Already 40% and counting here for the Houston Outlaws. A strong start to be sure. Amp Matrix is available for both Baptistes here. And Violet's anticipating a wrap around, but the Mayhem actually make a quick double back here. And Matrix is going to come up either way, and here comes the tank damage through it. Happy burns someone down. I mean, there's no, there's no way to live through that, right? Any support that you have, I mean, you know, you're not able to heal through that. The Amp Matrix is there. I think you know, we'll, we'll obviously see how the series progresses, but that the fact that the Outlaws can play this and win fights consistently against this Reinhardt comp definitely throws a wrench into some of what the Mayhem thought about coming into this series. Plenty to work with now for Florida. It's now or never. They're going to overclock the Blizzard coming in, but first Pelican drops it down. It has to be an ice block immediately from Checkmate. Off to the left here. You saw Merritt and Chorong having to play close together. They're going to be able to regroup and have another crack at it. Here comes the overclock. May Wall throwing up a disregard of it entirely. It's going to be happy again. The Maze out of the picture. He already used the ice block inside the Blizzard of that. Happy once more. Immortality Fields take him down. Artillery strikes available and Happy looks for a quiet corner to set this one off. He'll take his time. Someone being forced to dance, but Bernard's already found Chorong and RuPaul. Can only look on as his team are brought down. Genetic crafts of Bernard is enough to eat the damage. And this one has been a little one-sided. <laughs> oh, I'm a little busy right now, Chef. I better, I'm out to meet you at the bar, mate. Hey, I tell you what, though, you got a shot. He lost a lot of muscles since the <laughs> last time you've seen him. <laughs> I've dropped a couple of weight classes, yeah. Hey, even I got a chance at this point. <laughs> okay, let's get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> hey, Strong start for Houston. The vaccine yeah. is a huge difference maker, Matt. And I think what's really interesting is, is the Florida Mayhem believe that this Reinhardt comp is kind of the answer to some of the things that they've been doing with Sigma. At least there at the start, the Outlaws were able to play the Sigma comp at a high enough level to beat that. I think if you're the Florida Mayhem, look, this is a long series. You get another round, see if they can do it again. I think at that point, though, you're, it, you're in a weird spot. Do you match Sigma? Is that what you're going to go and do? Is uh, Bernard will actually play D.Va off the rip. So uh, D.Va with the Echo in the mix. And also happy on Hanzo. So a complete change of pace here from the Outlaws. You're really pricing yourself into flexibility here with this D.Va and Echo setup. Even the Hanzo. So much verticality from this setup and the ability to transition between so, high and low comfortably. And, and what they could have thought actually is that they were going to come out on something different than the Reinhardt. Like are they going to come out on like Sigma or Zarya or something completely different uh, that they thought they could really kind of contend with that, but they actually play that Reinhardt again. Pelican here, teasing at the edges, pulling on threads, just probing. Looking for an opening, but so far the Outlaws have begun the cap. It's checkmate dropping to the point. Pelican quickly has to use their flight call now, but it's happy! From the rafters, apparently! Insta-kill on Merit. But now here is on the scene, happy finds yet another one. He is having 
an absolute lights out match so far. Checkmates in front of them in the back line. It's Bernard wanting to pressure with the micro rockets and there's nothing he can do. I mean, you think of some of the craziest clips we've seen on Hanzo throughout the six years of the Overwatch League. A lot of those come from Happy, right? Uh, he's able, you know, think back, uh, I know in Temple of Anubis was the thing, right? You know, able to kind of get into the high ground, make some plays. It's, you know, he's able to just get these pickoffs as now they bring in the Sigma. But in the Sombra meta that dem dominated so much of this year, Happy was relegated to being a role player, someone less involved in the spotlight. Pelican got to play the Echo and a lot of the quote-unquote fun stuff. I mean, these comps in a lot of way, right? fit the Outlaws players much better outside of probably Fearless, right? Absolutely. Pelican has a duplicate here. You saw a Biode landed onto someone that really slows the mayhem on that high ground as they want to approach. That's a sticky surprise for Merit. He's low. He's able to get a health back, but Pelican thought about pushing a little harder. He'll take a sidebar here, but he'll be locked in this 1v1 for a moment now. Meanwhile, Immortality feels deployed and taken down. Oh, it's a dupe of the soldier. Pelican wants a bit of Arty Party. And he comes out on top. Checkmate again, flattened! I mean, and they are so split as well. That is a blizzard used by Checkmate into the back line as this is not a good start for the Florida Mayhem. Jake on the desk, set a full row for Houston. That's ambitious to say the least, but this is the pace they want to be uh, setting. I mean, J J you know, Jake is on that same payroll like Golden Boy's on, right? I mean, that, <laughs> the magic seeps out of the ground, it infects you. <laughs> Pelican here. Yeah, I mean, Nano, do you give this to Pelican, right? As Bernard actually switches off this D.Va, they're going to match that Sigma. You're going to get a real poke on from both these sides. Pelican oh, with the Nano. Sound barrier comes out from Chirong here. A little premature, perhaps. The Outlaw's going to try and get some ground back away from this. Wait it out, but Merit's already found Shu. Pelican can't quite get the focus in connection, and the kill goes begging. It's someone who says, get Flux. It's a really nice answer from the Florida Mayhem, right? That Nano goes on the Pelican, you know, Echo is so devastating with the Nano, right? You can get that focusing beam, any of those targets are just out of the way with ease. Chorong uses Sound Barrier, they also get the boop of Bernard down to the low ground, and he's not able to stay inside that immortality field. It's an easy kill and everything falls apart after that. And Matrix here for Rupal, a lot was spent by the Mayhem in the previous fight, but someone always oh, surges forward! Welcome to Geology Class, Shu! Desperately trying to shelter into the Immortality Field, but he is absolutely overrun! For the Houston Outlaws get smoked! So Bernard will get staggered out here. Oh! <laughs> you, my friend! Gets sure on for his trouble. Man has some cojones! <laughs> Shu finds that to be a sleepy <laughs> play. Less than impressed by that one. The Mayhem here ticking up about 50% now on the clock and Merit's waiting for an opportunity to use his overclock. He springs forward, but someone had already found purchase on Happy. Shu trying to hide behind Benar as much as possible, but Merit's unperturbed by the Diva, trying to reclaim that space. In the meantime, Pelican's knocked out of dupe here and the Outlaws are getting bogged down. Well, well, they're just having a really difficult time dealing with this aggression, right? They're not just playing at a distance to Florida Mayhem here and just welcoming them to come to the point. They're pushing up, they're bullying them behind Shorong's speed boost. That is another team kill as Florida Mayhem getting up to a spot where they're, you know, one fight to win this point. You've gone back to the D.Va already. Limited success, maybe try to shut Merit down as much as possible. There's a Nano available here for the Outlaws, but checkmate. Pelican knows. How do you do, sir? What a better cordial you tet -a tet Pelican. <laughs> now staring each other down. Here comes a cavalry that was Turong says. I'm going to interrupt this gentleman's duel for just a moment. But we're at 97% for the Florida Mayhem accounting. But now has to go and touch. He gets the Nano from Shu. No idea where he's going to be looking. But look at that. Checkmate laconically flips a blizzard in the direction of the Outlaws. Immortality field used, but it's far from enough. Pelican locked inside of his own design, apparently. And Checkmate's happy just to hold everyone else back. A self-destruct to limited effect. Pelican gonna be slowed up in the Mayhem Arena. It's, it's one apiece. I'd love to see the Outlaws like properly match that comp, right? You know, get the same exact things going, right? You know, get Violet on the Lucio, although, you know, very talented, obviously, on all the flex supports, but you know, maybe you try and mirror this, right? And get that Sigma V Sigma, but I mean, dude, look at this. It looks like these two teams are trying to counter comp each other so badly right now, right? You can see the swaps in between rounds and you kind of see where both teams are thinking where, you no, know, the Florida is probably expecting Bernard to come out on 
Sigma, right? You know, uh, after getting rolled on Diva the entire time right now, come out on Sigma, they're counter comping that with their Reinhardt. So let's see how this one goes. Back to the Bastion for Happy. I think just like if you see these comps here coming out the start, I, I think you gotta like the Outlaws with how they played early on in that first round of control. Merit is the wild card here, I feel. Yeah. You gotta may wall someone out of position and sort of drag him down. It's a very powerful way to deal with the front line of the mayhem. But can he enough to be aware of this? They still wanna push forward though. Happy working down that Ryan Shield checkmate coming out of Ice Block here. Fire Strike thrown in. Accretion as well. Someone under a lot of pressure also hit with a biotic grenade. But a wall's thrown up on the point to allow the Outlaws to assemble behind it. Oh, hang on. Someone's getting in there. Checkmate really low as well. They got to use the Immortality Field to keep him up. Someone burnt down. No violent able to find the damage. The Outlaws, regardless, pushed off the point. It's a Florida Mayhem cap to start with, but lacking the Reinhardt. It's a matter of time before the Grim Reaper comes calling. Oh, I mean, Checkmate gets really low again. Sigma and Merit, they just got to make their way onto the point. Someone's got to be on his way here. Merit finds the pick. Someone is back. And Matrix getting thrown up here, but Happy has his own demons to battle on the right side. Here comes someone. That Danny Lim. Like a bat out of hell. Merit here can hold the choke. This is a great spot for the Mayhem to be in. Assault configuration for Happy, but Merit is a hop, skip, and jump over his head. And he outplays the man. And when the Outlaws get that advantage on the point early on, Checkmate on the, the May here for the Florida Mayhem is able to just play around that central pillar. Even though he gets low, they are able to still heal him up. RuPaul gets an Amp Matrix. They have that Immortality Field. They never push up. They don't get aggressive enough. They don't have that Lucio speed to close that gap. Here's the overclock from Merit, though, hit with a nasty Biotic Grenade. He steps into that Immortality Field. The wall thrown up. This is how you try and punish someone, but he's going to be able to clamber away. Oh, Checkmate okay. also just getting out of there. Oh, it comes the Artillery Strike. Chorong very low. Holding the sound barrier, though. Nerds of Steel. Checkmate's in trouble. Going to throw the Blizzard in, and they've got to go for it. Sound barrier comes out, but someone's hit with a Bionade. But it's frozen stiff, though. Both supports down for Houston. Bernard cannot rely on a Gravitic Flux here. It has to be a reset. And one more chance for Houston. Yes, Houston may have squandered their opportunity early on. They get that pick on someone and then they're never able to go to the point. And you see now Violet on the Lucio. So I think this is kind of what they need to do. Play a little bit more of a faster pace. Is it too late? Yeah, it might be. Mana boost available. No great candidates for that. Maybe happy. Maybe use it for survivability, but that's a fire strike! And that's more than singe tips for Pelican. The Shatter is good too! Happy Dumpstead! And the Florida Mayhem stand tall on Antarctic Peninsula! It is not a one-sided map. That map is very close down to the wire. I'm curious what the Outlaws decide to do, right? After a loss, the map selection, you have the two tanks to kind of go through. It almost feels like you kind of have to play Bernard because you need the Sigma look to force them off the Sigma or else you're going to be playing like, you know, what, the Fearless Doomfist or Winston Angie, that Sigma the entire time. So I expect to see Bernard here for, for a good stretch of this series today. Curious what they decide to do moving forward. The Diva option felt fine as well. We understood why they wanted to take that to labs and have the ability to go up and down. The Hanzo was really effective for Happy, but eventually they got ground down by the Sigma composition of the Mayhem. Although it starts very much as an Outlaws map. Yeah, really good start for the Outlaws, right? Uh, the Florida Mayhem come out with this Reinhardt-based composition, knowing the Outlaws are going to run something, whether it be in the, you know, Diva Sigma realm. Uh, even if they ran Zarya, right? You still like that Reinhardt there in that uh, matchup. Uh, but then here, as we move to the second point, right? I mean, this is when Florida Mayhem really started to assert their dominance. And it's when they play Sigma, they play fast, right? They still have that Lucio in the mix. This Reinhardt comp, Florida Mayhem are just circumventing Bernard Shielding, walking past him with speed, knowing they have sound barrier in a fight like this. They just go, go, go. The Outlaws have to respect this, have to find a way to play around it. And I want to call back to what Jake said. He says he feels that a Rhine Mirror might be the way to go. Whether the Outlaws have the wherewithal to make that sort of switch, we're going to have to find out. First time they get to make their map selection map. Yeah, and we'll get a chance. It'll be Blizzard World here for map number two. So, uh, feels like you would leave uh, Bernard in. We have seen them go to Fearless, though, on this map to play Winston, right? Control that high ground. 
Curious to see if we see a sub coming in here from map number two. Both of our teams are primed and ready to throw down. A competitive first map goes the way of the Outlaws. Much more to come here from the Madame Athletic Center right after the break. Outlaws quickly gets turned on its head because the Florida Mayhem never say die. They were down 0 to 80% on that second round of Antarctic Peninsula and still bouncing back. Hey, while I've got you here, voting is now open for our Grand Finals MVP. Head over to overwatchleague.com forward slash MVP to have your say. Who do you reckon? While I've got you here, who's your MVP? Hey, let's not overreact, crowd. We got one, one game in us. Uh, I know last year, you remember how long that finals went? People's votes were changing left and right, <laughs> depending on uh, you know which way the wind blew. But it, so it looks like at least here coming into uh, Blizzard World, we won't have a sub. So this tells you that they want to play you know, Diva Sigma type compositions, right? Force them maybe onto that Reinhardt. Uh, maybe they force a Sigma head to head. I think that's what they're trying to do here with this. Yeah, one thing's for certain, we definitely don't see a dive composition out of the Houston Outlaws. There's been a lot of conversation about the Orisa, the Sigma, how they match up against each other. We've seen Junker Queen also yeah, that's true. brought in to answer these Sigma comps, but it seems like the theory is the same. Get past Sigma's barrier, run him down, and lay waste to everybody sheltering behind it. So I'm curious to see if we end up getting that mirror, because the Mayhem seem more than happy to buck the trend and go for a more aggressive push. Yeah, I mean, look, you have Chorong on that Lucio, right? 24-7, RuPaul can just kind of like move around all the different supports, right? Uh, you have a lot of flexibility with someone as tank. There's just a, you can really play just about everything and you can change things out on the fly pretty fast. 
Uh, where for the Outlaws, we really didn't see Violet play Lucio until the very end there when it really didn't matter. So we'll see if they maybe kind of opt for something like this coming in here. They're one of the only teams that are doing this right. These Baptista aren't a setup. It might seem greedy, but you're playing a composition where mobility isn't the most important component of your game plan. It's about having robust mix of that healing throughput plus an extra damage in a pinch. We see the Reaper guy. I was just oh, about to, to say the, the copy I was like, about to see the Reaper guy. I mean, uh, best hero in the game. This would be a uh, a little bit of a curveball here. I uh, I don't know if you will see it, but typically, uh, you know, Reaper uh, pretty decent against like Reinhardt, May heroes like that. Uh, you don't have a speed boost, yeah, to to get the Reaper in. I mean, that is probably the issue there with that pick. So, all right, the Outlaws drop the silly sauce, and it's a Hanzo here. So they're really investing in this poke composition. So how does the Echo factor into this game plan? Uh, well, look, you're trying to you know, keep everybody alive. You know the Florida Mayhem want to play aggressive. Charong's going to play that Lucio all the time. So maybe bake them in a little bit, right? Get those finishes with the Echo. I think the Outlaws just sniffed out the Ryan comp here because they brought Happy in instead. Echo obviously very scary for Ryan to deal with. The focusing beam can lay him low. Pokes. Oh, Kang is there! The Hypersphere's fine purchase! Merit gets sold for a kip. I'm all gonna be thrown up here, and oh, from the left side comes someone! But they're all ready for him. He doesn't get to his intended target. He'll back away, but that shield is getting mighty low. Shoes dealing with an assailant from the backside, and the sticky bombs claim someone! Perfect 10 from the judges for the Outlaws approach here. They break through the choke and take to the point. And the scary part of play playing the Symmetra is she's so vulnerable, right? It's it very squishy in terms of a damage dealing hero. So a few of those, you know, Hyperspheres and the Sigma right around the corner. The Bash who pumps out tons of damage. Uh, you can't keep Merit alive Oy. and they're not going to get a touch. And again, with a Reinhardt that's trying to come in from the side and, and get a flanking pin, your Symmetra doesn't have that frontline protection at all because your Reinhardt's trying to stay hidden. And if you can live through these aggressive comps, I would say that one kind of, uh, it's not even like really a, a knock on the floor at my hand, but like, oh, what's this? Uh, this is going to be a TP with an ant matrix high ground. Chorong doesn't play a ton of the flex supports, right? It's really a lot of Lucio. So if there's one break. thing that like, if you can force them off of, if you can get them away oh, from those aggressive man. comps, he's in trouble. Outlaws get a matrix of their own here on Pelican. Laser extremity reassignment for the Lucio of the Florida Mayhem. This is working out beautifully for the Outlaws now. Focusing beam there. Healthy amount of damage. It's only RuPaul. It's able to get any action. Because the, the Outlaws know that they want to get aggressive and move in fast on the side of the Florida Mayhem. So you have that biotic grenade to deal with. There's no, no Kuriko on the other side, right? For a cleanse. They're playing all in. And if you can force, you know, let's say you get a biotic grenade down, you force it early in Mortality Field to keep those players up. You still have yours. You're at a huge advantage. But now trying to control the high ground. The Mayhem are approaching and he knows it. So it's a gravitic flux on the menu. And the artillery barrage comes in after. What a garnish. Chorong is taken down, but it's more work to be done. Here is Happy is removed by Merit. Someone getting aggressive on the car, but Banar still trying to be the anchor. There's a nano up the sleeve for Shu here as well. Will it be Pelican sent forward? Merit decapitates him from the high ground. Uh, I mean, we got to see what angle he was looking at. I mean, that is a nasty shot because you'll see everybody else here fall for the outlaws. But I mean, do you get that nano boost on a Pelican right there? You're getting close to taking that second checkpoint. That was looking tight there. The Outlaws find that first pick and look like they were home and hosed. That Wombo combo only goes for one kill in the end. Merit coming alive just when needed. Pelican still holds a duplicate. Shu never had a chance to part with that nano boost. That's what's on the menu here. But what is this for, right? Are you going to duplicate and then get the you know nano after? I mean, uh, what is he cooking? Everybody's just hiding in corners. Or is he cooking? The shadow goes in and catches just the one and the creation to slow someone down, but he'll still charge for now. Meanwhile, Merit rips through them. That'll be three. You wouldn't know it, but that was the nano boost there as uh, the nano goes on to Happy when he gets hit with the shatter. But I mean, that is what? The overclock, that is sound barrier there and shatter used by the Florida Mayhem to get another fight win. Happy now goes over to the Hanzo here. So you're on that Bastion. It's really difficult to kind of challenge this high ground. Maybe with that long range sniper, a little bit able to just kind of get up to that high ground rather easy and find an early pick would be a huge advantage.
Wall thrown up in Happy's face, but he breaks through it easily enough. They're aware of a flanking presence here. Regardless, Happy looks to surge forward, gets clipped by the Fire Strike, but instantly topped back up, and Pelican oh, is going to work. A lot of here. damage for someone shielded you with it. That's three players hit by Yambega. I they're going to have the Immortality Field. Pressure's on Merit. He slips and slides away. Now Pelican controls the high ground and looks to put pressure on someone. Charging up to the next rail as Checkmate's decided to be the anchor on the card, and RuPaul strikes. It's Violet down. The Air Matrix catches the Outlaws by surprise, and Pelican is shooting shields. Yeah, I mean, just trying to build up you know, maybe charge. We used that 100 for a while as I uh, feel like I could have got a rail shot off. Is you, know, you had an opportunity two different times they had three players bioed and not able to follow up. One minute 35 to play. It's going to be a blizzard here straight away. Happy's got nowhere to go. Trying to jump away, but caught in midair. Shoe, though, sleep doesn't quite connect. And Happy was a key component of the Outlaws' plan there. This fight's already over in time. Here's our ticking. And you don't have that big wombo combo, right? You don't have that bash and artillery plus acrobatic flux here coming up. Do you have another nano? So probably nano on a pelican with acrobatic flux. You try and follow it up with the focusing beam. That could be something you can try and set up. Another nano here for Shu. No beat on the other side, so. He needs to make, he's making sure Bernard can get a full channel of the Gravitic Flux out. But someone already turns up here. It's gonna be Pelican get the nano. He slept. Pelican trying to wrap around the shield, but it's gonna be... Someone slinking away. What's Bernard looking for here? Anything, something, someone? No, it's RuPaul caught by that one, an immortality field would be on the menu, but he doesn't have one handy. A creation from the backside, someone, a rude awakening. Now he'll have to turn and face Bernard, but it's a sound barrier for the Florida Mayhem. All but merits, get it. Crucially, the ladder falls, and Bernard oh! is Bring me another, he says. A checkmate obliges. I mean, he looked as good as dead, dude. And Violet comes from the high ground, you know, the regenerative burst and immortality. Bio grenade. This is Bio what grenade, this I low mean. mobility backline can give you just raw throughput in a yeah. pinch. It's incredible. The Sigma survivability is pretty sick, right? With like Kinetic Grass, the, the ability to kind of like shield dance, right? But uh, not when you have like four players just barreling at you. I mean, that is some crazy stuff and for Violet And there's no Bio on Florida to shut no. down all that healing either. Frustrating for the mayhem. Looking like that, we're gonna put this to a stop again at someone bang from an off angle. Here's a rude awakening. The dragon is hungry and someone is devoured. The flank. They're gonna wrap around. Chorong found happy there. The immortality field to no avail. Pelican trying to respond to this, but they've already lost two. Chorong with the boot. And Pelican's in trouble now. It's an ice block to buy some time, but where's the teammates? Just Benar, and he will be dragged down. Pelican looking to make a quick escape, but he knows his juice. He's cooked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the blizzard persists after the dupe for a time. Yeah, a little bit of an exit blizzard just to get himself out. Is that a shatter from some? Backline. That's both supports. Shoot down first, Violet can't be far after. Merit sees him pop up. And it's a skeet shoot. So the fight before, the outlaw is actually, you know, that you get someone down with that dragon. You win kind of the battle in the front line, but Merit and Chorong on a sick flank come around and they're able to pick two. And then you're in this tough spot, right? You have no mobility players are just tucking a sandwich. Checkmate is lying in wait. He has the trigger discipline not to take the shot of Blizzard from the back line. Could be devastating, but the slip comes in. Still shoot going to be taken down from Chorong. He comes to the rescue and Happy never had a chance to engage. The Florida Mayhem will put this one to bed in short order. That's the end of the line for the Outlaws. And they're just so sneaky. Uh, it's like Shades of London Spitfire, right? But instead of kind of using the TP and sending in like Backbone and, you know, another player in to try and like assassinate one, it's really just Chorong, you know, kind of escorting like Merit and Checkmate into these like weird positions and being able to come around and flank. And that time Checkmate on the high ground comes down with that blizzard, nothing you could do about that. Just the one kill would have been enough, but what we didn't see initially on the screen was that Happy was frozen solid in the corner. So, Switching over to him, scooping him up was an easy task for the Mayhem. And we've seen a lot of this from Florida. They're trying to rewrite the script. They're trying to be as bombastic and as unpredictable as possible with these flanking shatters and, of course, these ninja blizzards. Well, the thing with Florida, I mean, we've talked about it. You know, the desk has mentioned it. Like, they don't really care what you play. Uh, they don't have to make any changes in terms of personnel to feel like they can counter it. They feel like they have figured this out. 
you know, playing really around those Sigma comps. And if you're okay with that, then they feel like the Reinhardt's that answer. So we'll see what they decide to do here on offense. I think, you know, the, the Reinhardt, right? Do you just lose all mobility here? Uh, I, I don't think that's something that you would look at and say, yeah, let's go yeah. for it. But you never know. Again, we see a lot of teams, London especially, will wrap around the right-hand side yeah. on the attack. And you have to play the Lucio. You need either like a Lucio or a Sim to get this Reinhardt in positions to actually make an impact. Especially against a poke composition with so much shield pressure via yeah. Storm Arrow in those hypospheres. Okay, they're scouted out here by the Sonic. They're going to wrap the right-hand side. This is pretty customary. Merrick going ahead here. Pelican opting to seed that high ground. They're gonna, they, they mean, we've seen teams wrap all the way around. They right? should. Yeah, that, that's the position they think they want to play from. Benar is set up to receive that here, but they're gonna go straight. Oh, what a bio nade. They're gonna go anyway. What a hairbrain play from the Mayhem. Will it work? Answer is yes. It's Merit fighting final right at the beginning, and Pelican dangles in midair. A tasty morsel for Merit to snack upon. Happy, not gonna fare much better here. It's gonna be him and Shu stuck together, and eventually knocked on out. I mean, look, they all pretty much get hit with a biotic grenade, but I think they know that if you just stand in, like, no man's land with that Reinhardt comp, you are as good as dead. You may as well push on in, right? Play inside so, the immortality field that RuPaul's about to throw right, down. Well, it's going to be okay. Yeah, you're going to be fine, right? So push through and get past and make a play. You're able to take out Violet right off the rip. This is really interesting from the Outlaws. So I believe we actually saw the Dallas Julian play something like this with the Genji and the Bastion with, uh, you know, the Baptiste and Lucio. Oh, 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 oh. Pelican there, getting up close and personal. Chorong getting a little bit too close to lethal range there. Not only the composition, but also just how close the Outlaws are playing. They know they need to get value out of this Sigma durability. Well, the, the thing is, is now they have the Lucio, right? So you have the, the, the ability to disengage. You have the ability to close the gap. It, it doesn't allow, the, you know, he, the right before, they were just kind of standing there like pretty stationary targets, allowing them to just get ran down. You don't have that now. They don't expect to see Merit from the backside there. Pelican needs to be wary. Goes for the deflect. Merit wants to charge up a proper rail here, but his angles are terrible. Forced back inside the small room, but the Outlaws want to chase him down this time. Someone sheepishly trying to back away. Grenade thrown in there as well. He's calling for a regroup, but the Outlaws are waiting for them. Here's the charge. He's going for it. Accretion comes in. Knocked off course. Meryl with the overclock now. Has just a keyhole to fire through. And gets rid of the immortality field. And someone is in there. Meryl gets involved. And that's curtains for the Outlaws. Uh, you will see Bernard fall here at the end as comp swaps from the Outlaws. That's a Gravitic Flux and Amp Matrix used there. To no avail. Nice sound barrier there by Chorong, able to keep everybody on the mayhem up. As you're going to get close to capping this second point with over three minutes. I mean, the Outlaws need a fight win bad. The pressure is on big time. But now making a switch over to the Arisa. This does mean that the Outlaws are a little more susceptible to an Earth Shatter. And that's just what someone's cooking. Forced off the stairwell, though. Awkward position to be in. Pelican regains the high ground, but the blade doesn't find any value. And they, they just can't go in and chase, right? I mean, he's the only one. They know there's a blizzard on the other side. The blizzard has got to be the scariest part of this. If you all in the mayhem, you're going to end up with egg on your face. Pelican wants to probe, but he's in a little bit of danger here. Someone's very low on the approach. They're going for him. They want him. They break the shield, but someone holds his ground. You'll have to try and find a way to get back up. Otherwise, all the mayhem will need to drop with him. And so they do. And the Arisa is an interesting choice, right? Can play really frontline with that Reinhardt and also get in the mix really fast. I'm scared of the shadow. I mean, someone yeah. knows how to bring the house down. Immortality field already here for the Mayhem. Pelican here just deflecting in this corner, relying on Shu to drop down and give him that healing from the off angle is Benar. Sound barrier for the Outlaws. That's a big part of the plan for their next fight. The Blizzard is still such a problem but the Mayhem can't pin them down. I, I think they're trying to bait them into like using the Shatter of the Blizzard onto, you know, Bernard, right? But he'd have Fortify, be able to get out of that. They, they don't want to go for that right away. They're just trying to manufacture something. What wall? Happy, you're gonna burn that one down awful quick. Florida hey, Mayhem. You burnt the minute off the clock here, if you're the Outlaws. They need much more than that, Matt. So uh, much more. Here come the Mayhem once more, out of their hidey hole. Pelican caught up mid-range and there's the charge. It will be interrupted as someone expected. Maywall thrown up, Shatter, it's happy. He tries to get down the stairs, but not just in time. Checkmate on the card to push it forward. A sound very here for the Outlaws. Chorong popped his as well. Benar gets there. It's gonna be an overclock from Merritt in the back line. The Maywall's thrown up and here comes the blade. It's shut down. Merritt ends the Cyber Ninja's life. Benar tries to turn things around with a terror surge, but it's all Merritt all the time. Always was. That's another checkpoint for
for the mayhem. A hair's breadth from victory. It's probably a lot of MVPs going in on Merit right now as he has been on fire on the Sojourn, especially during those overclocks. It feels like every time it's two, three kills. So he will now go over and play the... Okay, so they're going to play Bastion with Sigma against this Arisa. This is just a chess match. Florida switched a heck of a lot in their semi as well. Maywall doesn't catch anyone, but gives the Mayhem some time to shrug off attack configuration. Happy does have that artillery barrage available. Shu really working over time to keep the heals up here. This is scary. Here comes the out matrix now to Maywall thrown in the way. Happy looks to try and get around. Oh, there it is. Okay. Immortality fields out of the picture, but Merit finds Violet already. Merit forced back. Pelican trying to challenge him, but how can you? The rest of the Mayhem group up, and Shu is the last soldier standing. The Houston Outlaws booted out of Blizzard World. That is a Outlaws map selection that does not go their way. And we talked about it, and, and you don't know until you get here in the final, right? And you kind of see it like live in person, but like. They have the answers, it feels like, the Florida Mayhem. That when they know they bring out Arisa, Bastion, this is our go-to. When they play this, this is our go-to. And it makes it really difficult for the Outlaws. It feels like they're always playing a step behind. I got a bad feeling about this, man. I got a bad feeling indeed if you're an Outlaws fan, because the Florida Mayhem in every term seem to have the answer. This is that bizarre off angle here for someone, I mean, but the real centerpiece was Merit. Just hammering them as I came through. Look, even if you feel like you have the answers, if Merit, every time he gets overclocked, is going to kill three people, it does not matter, right? Even if you feel like you got the right comp. I mean, if he's playing this well you know, on the Sojourn, I mean, it is going to be difficult to take down the Mayhem. Houston Outlaws had to be wrecking their brains here. Heading to a flashpoint map in the third. They need to find a way to right cut their course as soon as possible. The Florida Mayhem switching up. They play a lot of Reinhardt here, and the Outlaws are looking for answers. The Sigma makes way for the Orisa. The Mayhem switch into a Sigma of their own. They're more than happy to play musical tank. I mean, that's a shot of the map right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have that immortality field down there for like a brief moment in time. It gets destroyed, and then Pelican's going for the blade, and you just take a headshot from an overclocking soldier. And I mean, that is a. If Pelican gets that blade off, who knows? Right? That'd be Suravasa. Sure yeah. Suravasa. The map pick for the Houston Outlaws now, who are struggling to stay in step with the Florida Mayhem, who refuses to bow. That's two maps done in this first to four series. Stick around, of course, much more to come, especially if you're hoping for a Houston Outlaws comeback.
All right, what's good, everyone? As we're down right now for the Houston Outlaws 0-2, they're looking to try and make a comeback happen. The question, though, and everyone's mind is who you think is going to be the MVP. Real, real fast, real fast. Go ahead and say a name out loud. Who do you think is going to be the MVP of this final? It's a lot of information. I'm only one man. I can only do so much. Bang, I keep puffy. Come over here. <laughs> All right. I got myself a Houston Outlaws fan over here. Uh, let's go ahead and show that off to everyone. Mike, that's really, really nice. What's your name? Where are you from? Flash Mob. I'm from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico in the house. I won't lie, I kind of did this purposefully so that I could go ahead and yell Puerto Rico in, in uh, Canada. Uh, now, who do you think should be the MVP of the finals here today if Houston Outlaws manage to make a comeback? Or you could pick Florida, either one. Meredith's making this really hard for us, but I'm not losing faith, so I'm going to go with Pelican. Okay. All right, Pelican, Pelican, all right, all right. All right, we need a Florida fan. Come over here. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. All right, what is up? What is up? What's your name? Where are you from? Brian from Tampa, Florida. All right, we got a true Floridian in the house. Okay, so I know you're gonna pick the mayhem. Who do you think's the MVP for you so far? We crowned him earlier today. Someone, baby! Woo, I, think, I don't think anyone here will disagree with that. Well, folks, all you gotta do is vote for your grand finals MVP. Go to overwatchleague.com slash MVP, and you can go ahead and submit your choice right then and there. But for now, let's go ahead and send it back over to the casters, see if someone clutches up and ends this one 4 0 Uber, X, what you think? There's a gap emerging in this matchup. A lot of it can be credited with that flexibility and mastery over so many different tanks of someone. And the Houston Outlaws have to act quick before it becomes a chasm. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like the Outlaws have tried numerous things already in this series. Uh, you try and think about like what else they could go to. Uh, it, it seems like the Mayhem kind of have their number really at every turn. I think one of the more interesting things is obviously Flashpoint. We see teams typically, outside of like really London, uh, play Lucio all the time. So you expect, you know, obviously a Lucio for the Outlaws here. Violet could pilot that hero. Maybe that like forces them to play at a faster pace, kind of unlocks something a little bit different. Do you want to see Soldier flanking here at all? Might yeah. be an Outlaws option. I, I feel like that's so tough. I mean, I feel like it's so dated at this point, that type of flank. Can we move fast, don't we? Yeah, like Soldier on the flank, uh, when the other team is just gonna like run players down with Reinhardt. Like, it feels like it's it's kind of a bit of a throw, right? So it may, maybe you play like, uh, I think Sojourn obviously is a great pick. Maybe you even try and play that Hanzo again. Uh, it feels like the Sojourn has a little bit more flexibility. And the Merit Sojourn so far has been terrifying. The sheer level of mobility afforded to her means that in a pinch you can make that reposition and get out of trouble. Looks like the Outlaws might be in agreement here. Or... Well, we head over to Bastion for Happy. Yeah, very Boston. Yes, in Boston, obviously, uh, no, did not win, but put up a pretty good fight. So if you see what they did, hey, maybe we can kind of recapture some of that same magic, right? The merit issue is going to be cropping up a few times here because this is a comp that was used against it's already the London Spitfire, yeah. right? You're dealing with a Sojourn now, not a, a May Bastion combination. Pelican on the Genji needs to make some magic happen. Straight to the doors first here for the Outlaws. Again, this Orisa comp will allow you to push up, take some space, but eventually the Mayhem looks to surge back in. Accretion there, shrugged off for the most part. It's a split for the Florida Mayhem. Checkmate gonna play the left-hand side. But now wants to try and cut off the back line here and spots the May. Knocks Checkmate to the point. It's a dangerous spot from DeBee. He's got to use that ice block pretty much straight away. And someone is corralled, surrounded, and brought down. Just so much survivability on Orisa, right? The spear spin, the fortify. Feels like you can live forever if you manage your cooldowns correctly. And that's exactly what Bernard did there. I thought Violet did a nice job displacing players on the way in. Someone just like playing in a corner on the point, just like trying to like 1v1 somebody. That's not what you want to see if you're the Mayhem. Yeah, they threw up like a, a, a May wall laterally and tried to run in past it, but then they split someone away from the rest of the well, DPS. Well, they don't want to take all that damage from Happy coming through the choke, right? Gonna have to face it one way or another. It's a shield already thrown up by someone. It takes significant damage. Oh my goodness! Was it Igneous Metamorphic? He won't know. He's, he's staggering. 
Someone wants to push a bit further up here at Matrix. He seems unperturbed by it. Javelin spin to knock someone down at a lower level, but he's found happy with the hyperspheres in one. No. Eats one on the way out, too. I, I mean, the Ant Matrix, right, you're not doing a ton of damage to it, but it forces them into a terrible spot. You either run back towards that point where you know they're not going to make it all the way back to, you know, avoid line of sight, and then you're going to be able to come around that corner and shoot through that Ant Matrix, or they have to all push into you at about half health, right? So that's kind of the, the situation the outlaws are in there. They chose the option of moving forward. Maybe with the spear spin, you're able to live, get everybody topped up. Did not happen, and the Mayhem get a flip. They lost Pelican awfully early in the fight. A Gravitic Flux is on the cards here. There's a Blizzard as well. The Mayhem have so much to work with right now. It's about deploying them adequately. Here's Pelican in a deflect. The immortality kill for Happy and Chewie goes straight into the Cannon Barrage. Sound barrier for the Florida Mayhem lets him shrug it off, but Merritt can't get away. It's a trade. Bernard's taken down. A Pelican Blade might be in order now as well. He wants to pressure this Baptiste down, and he's going to go for it. He pulls the blade, but he's down to 20 already. Rippile was ready and waiting. Air Matrix thrown up, but guess what? Someone's on the wrong side of it. So you throw everything here towards the end to try and win it. He just gave uh, up the point. Yeah, I mean, that is... Uh, you may not have been able to get back in, get another fight anyway, but... Does not look pretty as the Mayhem take that first point. Story of the series, a strong start for Houston, eventually brought to a screeching halt by the Mayhem. They'll keep the same composition heading into our next point. What do you think about the Sojourn here for Happy versus that Bastion, right? I think the Bastion is very dangerous during wheels mode, not as much outside of it. Uh, and I think that gives a direct signal for Florida of when they can go. Uh, so this is a, a little bit maybe harder to judge. Rupal here falls away. Immortality Field has to be used instantly, but he's running to the ground. But now found him with the javelin. Pelican goes down. Now check my buy some time with the ice pop, but they all look at the May. As soon as she emerges from cryostasis, it's to a hellscape. Shu has gone down in the meantime. Chorong bounds back into his own backline. Someone, nice use of the kinetic grasp here, but Mero is looking to find his way through. And Banar runs him down. Still a trade. There it is. Someone sish kebobbed. And it's just Chorong to deal with here. Tough customer. But are getting pressure from another direction, he can't quite tell. But he'll huddle together with Violet and take the point, or at least attempt to. Yeah, it was RuPaul coming off spawn, not able to get there in time, but... And that is a long, dragged out battle just to get control off the rip, right? So... The Outlaws, you have this sound barrier to deal with this Gravitic Flux. There's no, like, big wombo combo on the other side. You feel pretty good about that. Immortality Field also a factor there. Someone getting battered as he tries to move up, looks for an accretion, gets nothing, falls back, he now needs to peel for his backline. Gravity Flux to stop the charge, he better hope it's enough! No! It's interrupted! Someone skewered in midair, and the ultimate is cancelled! But now wants to surge forward, he knows he's close to a terror surge, but it's superfluous at this point! The Outlaws are putting it together! Uh, now someone gets staggered out, oh, man, that is a crazy play. They run right past someone. That's the thing with the Orisa, right? You even get like a little bit of the Lucio speed in the mix. You get right past that Sigma shield that you don't even have to try. We've been talking about it. Circumvent, ignore, yes. disrespect the Sigma. Okay, Immortality Field's got to come down early because Shu has that at Matrix. Dangerous game being played by the Mayhem here. The Blitz is going to be mostly shrugged off, except for Violet, but the body blocking from Banar has been good. It's an air matrix in the way, and here's the terror surge! Happy finds two, they and play. now we're they seeing... Play. They flip it. The Outlaws come back in with a player advantage, though. Yeah. Should be flipped back over pretty comfortably. Yeah, they're going to get it back. Now we're but... seeing proof of concept for the Happy Sojourn, too. Yes, this is starting to look good here for the Houston Outlaws. Starting to... It's really that aggression, right? Now you get right past that Sigma Shield. Once they get past it, even if they're throwing blizzards or, you know, graphitic flux, you have Fortify, you know, the Terror Surge also gives you, like, a little bit of a, you know, damage reduction with another Fortify, so, like, you can start cycling those together. It becomes really difficult to get rid of some of these players. Dragon Blade with no sound barrier for the Mayhem, so Pelican, if he's judicious with his timing here, can really cripple the Mayhem and start on the right foot again. Florida have the strong positioning, they're going to be pushed into here. Oh, what a rude wall. Pelican. He will climb over. Okay, here's a gravitic flux from someone. Do you act now? Who's going to be caught in there? Oh, jackpot! Who's not going to be caught in there? <laughs> it's probably the better question. Four players in the flux, and they get dematerialized. Where are you going, Shoot? Uh, nowhere. Bounding like Bambi all the way to his demise. 
Yo. Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> uh, you know, that gets like 20% though, right? Uh, you know, right off the rip is, ah, uh, man, that is a monster Gravitic <laughs> Flux from someone. Oh, man. So uh, you, you kind of saw where he was going around that corner. Everybody started to pile up. This lets Chorong build that sound barrier back up. He's uh, at 30% I mean, of the sound of you, you end up didn't really kind of spending anything in that fight, right? So you get this point back. Maybe it's not a heavy investment. You still feel all right. Again, dealing with support ultimates here means there's no guarantee that this works. Great wall! What a wall! They can't get to the point! Chorong's having to deal with Happy at the start of the fight. It will still be a sound barrier for Violet for four. But for what? For what? Shoes down. Yeah, you've lost ults. I mean, are you playing? Nothing. You're playing for like next point at this at this time, right? I mean, you know, both teams exchange out their support ultimates. Pelican still holding on to this blade. Maybe you feel like, hey, let's give that one up. This next go around, right? We know no support ults on the other side of things. Pelican can get a blade, get us point first. The pressure starts to mount here for your Houston Outlaws. They have to win this flashpoint to stay in it. Terra Surge up in a moment. Very quickly making their way into the side hall. They know they need to fight. It's going to be a blade pretty much instantly. And Pelican is looking. Has to back away. The Blizzard here gives him pause for Thorpe and Fire. It wasn't quick enough. Now they're operating with only four players. Still the Terra Surge coming in from Benara. Checkmate is taken down. Now we're even. Mirror with an overclock, but he's holding on to it as Pelican dives in for another fight. It's a Gravitic Flux. Pelican's caught in it. Merit's safe enough, but Benara is starting to bear down upon him. With that fortify, Merit has to back away. Cops are right from across the map, and someone is down. The Houston Outlaws are coming back. A nightmare start to the fight. Dude. But they break through. Shu is nuts. I mean, up on that high ground, he's so difficult to get out of that position. And it just allows Bernard to just stay on that point. You know, the shield's been the fortify. He gets a, there's some nice fortify with the Terror Surge on the high ground to keep himself a little bit of alive through all of that. And even with the Pelican Blade not being this massive pop-off moment, they're still able to get the point. Happy cordoned off by the May Wall. But it wasn't exploited by the Mayhem here. It's just to shut down the Ant Matrix. Some extra percent for Houston, but nothing more. Here come the Mayhem again. That was a big accretion. It happy wants to be. He heads into the back line. What is this? He's unhinged. He's unhinged. And now he's unlifed. Well, that was quite aggressive from the Outlaws. Uh, I actually think that they probably thought they were going to live long enough for Violet to get beat, be the next, like the second team to beat, and then outlive them in the long run. Uh, he does not get Sound Barrier, and it does not go that way at all. <laughs> the upshot is, is that the Mayhem have expended both of their support ultimates here. If you're quick about it. Oh, that's the perfect pick! Can't ask for much more than that. Now that mobility severely compromised for the Mayhem as they try and regroup a player down. Pelican wants to get started pretty quickly, but he takes a ton of damage on the approach. The Outlaws will set up for a cap here. How do they transition into a fight? Well, there's some players up on the high ground for the Florida Mayhem. They're starting to wrap back out through this choke here. As now it looks like they're all getting sped up towards the high ground. The Outlaws on the chase. Terra Surge up here. I think Banal wants to try and herd them into the small room, but they will disperse upon the point. Happy a little bit low, but it's the sound barrier now. Merit has to go to work on this overshield. Happy takes two rails in midair. Barrett's looking for more, but it's too late. Happy's caught in the blizzard, though. Here's the Terra Surge as Merit dives head first into it. Punished for his hubris now is just someone remaining. And the Outlaws are going to take this flashpoint map all the way. I mean, this is, feels like the Outlaws' best chance to get a map so far in this series as we go the distance. It'll be a great flashpoint spawn for them. They'll get a little bit of a closer spawn here as the Florida Mayhem, they'll actually have Merit move away from the Bastion now, uh, may, onto the Bastion, away from the Sojourn, which he's been so good on throughout the series. This might be the most important objective of the series. The Houston Outlaws need to finish the job here and give themselves some breathing room. There's a Gravitic Flux available for someone. The Bastion switch for Merit. Pelican wants to trade here on that left-hand side. It's going to be an Ant Matrix. Plenty of time for the Florida Mayhem to back away. The Outlaws will establish themselves, though, as the residents of this point. 
And I think the Outlaws have to know that this fight is so important, not just in this map, but just the overall grand scheme of things in the finals. Gravitic Flux. Three in the Flux. A down like dominoes for the Houston Outlaws. That's a Castle Curse, if I've ever heard one. This is the most important fight they got. And they get absolutely steamrolled through when someone comes through with another Gravitic Flux RuPaul with an Ant Matrix. You do come back with this blade. You're going to have a sound barrier to answer it, though. It's been competitive so far. 31% game for the Outlaws with that first fight. Here comes the blade from oh, Pelican. Early. What is he looking for? Maybe a cooldown or two. Someone barely getting out alive. They back away from the immortality field. And the Mayhem will escape. That's an ultimate down for the Outlaws. They do have they, an overclock. They didn't even get sound barrier out, though. They were so far away from when they started to use that. Chorong. Nerves of Steel gonna let the sound barrier go now, and it is on. Happy getting pressured down with the overclock here. The rest of the Outlaws get the sound barrier, but Happy wasn't nearly as lucky. Somehow, Violet comes to the rescue. Chorong desperately looking for that kill. He still hasn't found it. Happy wins out. That's a big one. Blizzard in play, but Banana steps back, and Happy gets a second before being frozen. Who's gonna come to collect? No one. He's safe. And back in the action, but the Mayhem still control the point. And Merit! He's found two. How does Banana it's just not happening. Now it's Pelican all alone, Violet will attempt. But it's just not enough. Oh my, this is getting dicey. So Florida takes a 3-0 lead. And you know what it is? We, we've talked about it, I feel like, all weekend. Like that Bastion damage through the Ant Matrix, right? At the end there, RuPaul's got an Ant Matrix around the corner. They have Merit in position, and the Orisa is not sturdy enough. Doesn't have enough cooldowns to live through some of that, right? Sigma's got the shield, the kinetic grass can get like in the face a little bit. The Orisa, you got the spear spin and fortify. You can't even take that damage to the face, you know, using fortify. You got a Lucio as a support, you know, with probably the Baptiste back there, right? You can't, you can't kind of blow through all those cooldowns straight away. And once they brought that bash, it was really tough to keep playing that Orisa. Good pace out of the gates for the Houston Outlaws here in Suravar, so they start with that 80%. But eventually, it's the Florida Mayhem come back in. A botched blade here from Pelican, giving away that first point. Yeah, I mean, we take a look at some of the highlights here. Things were going good for the Outlaws, right? I really liked the Arisa composition. I mean, this is a huge flux here. I mean, it looks like Pelican even dashes into it there, gets pushed into it. But I, I really like the Arisa comp. It's just when they when they went to that Bastion, you just can't really run it. Maybe you can run it if you're running a Bastion of your own, really putting pressure on their Sigma, but to run it with just that Soldier, and it feels like you're at a disadvantage. This is the Outlaws' last chance to choose a map in this series. They must win out from here. An almost insurmountable task faces them, and that push will begin on Esperanza. Yeah, you think you can play some Orisa here if you're the Outlaws? That's something you maybe want to look towards here, but you just saw how that just ended. Maybe you have an answer for that Bastion type of setup. Everything you have left, Houston Outlaws, it's time to leave it out there. They desperately hang on for survival. It's the Florida Mayhem look imperious. Stick around, it's map four on the docket.
yo, 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 crank that volume, turn it way up. Get your weapon, get your plate out. Damn, damn, it's then you gon' pay up. Yo, 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 crank that volume, turn it way up. Get your weapon, get your plate out. Damn, damn, it's then you gon' pay up. Yo, 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 yo. Three maps in a row. The Florida Mayhem refuse to slow down. They refuse to take it easy on this Houston Outlaws team who looks beleaguered. Fight as they have and fight as they will. They have struggled. I mean, they're just searching, right? And it feels like whenever they find an answer for a fight or two, the Florida Mayhem go, oh, that's cute. And they just slip their comp and they're good to go again, right? I mean, it's really got to be frustrating, I think, for the Outlaws players. It happens here and there. We saw Pelican play Genji for much of that Suravasa map. At times, was able to have a huge impact. But the game plan for the Outlaws was push past the Sigma shield, ignore him almost, and decimate the backline. And it did work for the most part. But once yeah. the support ultimates came online for Florida, they were able to buy enough time well, to, push, to push them back. I, I mean, it's once they switch to the Bastion, there's no, like, yeah, pass the Sigma now shield, what? great. Now you're in the middle of our team and we have a Bastion with wheels mode. This would be the most scripted owl uh, moment of all time if we get a fearless sub in here, which we will see fearless jump back in with a little bit of a run back here. I mean, I'm here for the magic. I'm here for the fairy tale. I'm here for the protagonist who takes his place at the center of his team, the Houston Outlaws, now look to fearless so, for salvation. But, but I ask, what's going to be different? Right? Uh, you can play Doomfist, you can play Winston, Reinhardt. Uh, maybe it's a Reinhardt mirror, but if they play Reinhardt, you kind of probably feel that they, you know, the Florida Mayhem, they believe maybe Sigma is like an answer to that, or, you know, they have the Arisa based compositions they go to. It, it feels like a little bit of a Hail Mirror. So the concern is a lack of depth in hero pool for Fearless to sort of respond to how flexible someone's been? Well, you know now you're not going to see Sigma. You know you're not going to see D.Va, right? Having a really good chance, you're not going to see Zarya. I mean, we haven't really seen Zarya all much, but takes that threat off the table. Like, you know, I mean, they have like Wrecking Ball potential here. Like, I mean, hey, we've seen some teams try and do it. I, I think you're probably more likely to see Doomfist. I think that's probably the direction this goes. Someone on your screen now. He's done it all. Hey, he had himself a day, right? Yep. <laughs> Much more than just an emblem of victory to play for here at our 2023 Overwatch League Grand Finals. Esperanza will be our push map. And it is truly last chance saloon for the Houston Outlaws. It would be the most outlaws thing ever, though, to run it all the way back. But it's got to be now. I mean, you got to get off to a hot start here. You really got to make Florida think about what they need to go to and make some really fast adjustments on the fly. And it almost feels like you need, you absolutely need a first fight here to go your way for the outlaws, right? To see the Florida Mayhem get like a team wipe, get like, you know, 30 meters on the bot, yeah, it feel tough to overcome. Like you said, man, it feels like a Hail Mary for Fearless to make his appearance here. I mean, Jorge. And can you run the dive? I mean, you just look at each other in the back and say, you know, if we're going to go down, let's go down and do the thing, right? Bring Fearless back in, get him on Winston. I mean, the Bastion scares it feels the crap like, out of me. So the way you do this, if you did play that, you need a hack on that Bastion. He needs to die. One more time! The Houston Outlaws have to find victory here. If you hack this Bastion and he does not die, I mean, it's also going to be tough. You have Immortality Field in the mix. You have Kinetic Grass. You have the Shield. If you commit that hard and you do not win that fight, you are screwed trying to get this Winston out of there. We're about to find out, was the Winston the answer all along? The Bastion is so complicated to try and maneuver around. Phil is already taking significant poke damage, as has Sue. 
It's the Florida Mayhem that get to take center stage to start. In Merit, doesn't need to use like wheels mode and transform until a dive comes in, right? Just kind of poke and prod at a distance for now. They're taking their time. Look at how Checkmate dove in there. Someone was hacked, harassed. But where's the lethal damage? The Outlaws need to get happy involved in this fight. Phillips now under pressure here, hit by the accretion. That health force starting to dwindle. He jumps away to the rescue. Checkmate though, it's two with the focusing beam. Served up on a silver platter. I mean, Checkmate was trying to take out Shu there, and Fearless just jumped right into the line of fire and said, hey, Make please, me too. Happy sent crashing against the masonry by that accretion, the Florida Mayhem. It's a strong start. Yeah, I and mean, this is what you did not want to see if you're an Outlaws fan is, like, look at Fearless, right? You're taking, like, some poke damage, but if you want to go in and commit, you got to commit your leap. They're going to just use, like, wheels mode on that bash, and guess what? You're weak going out. Here comes the Echo flying right in with that focusing beam to finish you off. Check my spy checking here. Doesn't reveal Pelican. Provokes the dive out of Fearless at the very least. It's Happy trying to go to work on his high ground. The Outlaws have barely put a scratch on the mayhem so far. It's time to commit, and so Fearless does. Punches RuPaul out. And now the Mayhem back away behind that kinetic grass. Happy doesn't want to let him get away, but what choice do you have? The stick is gone, and Merit is in pieces! That is from long distance, as you needed something to go your way. In the worst way, as Fearless gets that Nano up top, you take out RuPaul, really the hugest source of healing there for the Florida Mayhem, and now you got an EMP, give yourself a chance to tie it up. I can't shake the feeling that the Outlaws are playing this on hard mode. But if anyone can do it, it's them. Pelican spotted early there by RuPaul. Had to get out. Not in position to use an EMP for the time being. The Outlaws look to assume the high ground. Checkmate though wants to wrap around a constant threat. Here's the EMP. Chorong is down. The body grenade was good from Shu. It's an easy pickup. He had the rally. And it's gone to waste. Now Fearless with a primal rage as someone is a smear on the wall. Do you believe? Man, that is huge, where you're able to get Chorong when he's using that rally. The Ant Matrix gets used there. Not a lot of, I mean, if you can get, like, the supports here, right? Gravitic Flux, that'd be useful, but Violet's got that rally. So the Outlaws take the lead, here. yo. It's a butt scratch! <laughs> Nano for Fearless on the table again. Shoe farming them up awfully quick. Checkmate looking for a 10,000 view, foot view of the situation. Sees very little. A duplicate on it. Arna, perhaps. He'll be staved off by a whip shot. Clears that translocator by Pelican. They weren't in position to capitalize. Fearless is low. Nano for him. He's on the dive already. Looking for checkmate. Merit hacks for the time being. Fearless is caught in the flux. Can they keep him alive? Unreal! Miley with the rally. We're far from done, though. Happy needs a big pulse. He gets the stick. No, it's eaten up. Someone with the kinetic grasp. Dematerializes that huge ultimate. And Shu has to do the stall thing. The Outlaws suffer the wrath of the Mayhem Alt Bank. Yeah, you fully wipe there if you're the Outlaws, right? You get a little bit of a reset because the bot, you know, it did not complete the checkpoint for the Florida Mayhem. So you still have that bot is going to have to get all the way back to that barrier and then push over the line. You don't have that Bastion inside yet. So do you have a lot of time here for the Outlaws? And that allows them to get that EMP. Even still, the Mayhem playing is awfully safe. They just take the high ground. See from the periphery of Pelican, trying to hack but, someone. But the Outlaws want time, right? They want to build up a Nano. Someone gets low, they're not going to get baited in going after that. They want to build up Nano, they want to build a BMP. Here's the Artillery Barrage. The Outlaws being made to dance for the time being. So a dive away there by Fearless. This is all the time for the Mayhem to push up a bit. And Matrix in hand for RuPaul. This is dangerous in that corner. It's an EMP for Pelican like you alluded to earlier, Matt. Could be a fight winner. Chorong last time was shut down mid-rally by the EMP by a combo, and here it comes again! It's RuPaul this time! Immortality Field was there, but not enough to save the map, and here comes Fearless, swinging for the fence! He sees Merit! He's knocked out of tank configuration! The Outlaws still got some finishing to do, and so they will! Houston are back in possession! And that's totally fine for the Outlaws. Like, when they saw the Mayhem playing up on the high ground and just kind of, like, poking and prodding, 
You're okay with that. You're building up ultimates. You're letting Shu just farm some healing on a Fearless. Build up a Nano. The timing from Pelican was perfect, right? You know, the Amp Matrix goes right away. You don't have that for RuPaul and the Florida Mayhem. A pulse for Happy Heat could go a long way. The threat generator just by someone's presence though was enough to send him on a different track. Nice little bounce there. Checkmate a little bit low. Hacked, harassed down by Pelican. Happy looking for a way in. Looking for the answer. There's the pulse thrown down. Bio and three players here. It's dangerous for the Mayhem to stick around. Checkmate duplicates a Winston now. It's a hack on Merit, attempts it. And here comes Fearless again, lit up like a Christmas tree with that Nano. And the Immortality Field will be brought down. There's a Primal though from the Duplicator Checkmate here that Fearless might have to respect. There's a lot of pressure on Sue right now, but they peel him off their udder. Yeah, it's just all traded from both sides. It's really, now you have this Gravitic Flux. flux Checkmate! Have a rally. They got him! Oh. Gravitic Flux here for two. They'll live. No lethal damage until the accretion comes in. It's a trade, one for one. Fearless has a moment now to get top back up, but Happy is jumping in the pit to get involved. Someone with a kinetic grasp. RuPaul has an air matrix here. It's awkward for both teams now. A player down. Pelican is brought to heal by Merit elsewhere. What is Fearless doing? All right, maybe a stall. Yeah, I think just trying to, you know, get back to spawn, get regrouped as fast as possible. Interesting, Checkmate going to switch to the Tracer here. I, I think this is a good move where the Tracer's uh, really good, obviously, you know, Matt mirroring a Tracer v Tracer, where Echo is not great against Tracer in that dive. The Florida Mayhem now will get into the lead. But for how long? They're ahead of us. Pelican's gone hunting. It's both supports corpse. They and it's all too simple. Merit hacked out of that tank configuration here. Fearless found him. The numbers favor the Outlaws here, but they need to turn this into a lead. They lost Violet, and on the hack, Checkmate was a target. And Fearless makes him a pancake. But you did have to use your EMP to get control of that bot in the primal range and as well. And through the fight, look at the progress Florida made. Right. Another 20 meters. So, I mean, what? You're, you're, really, another one. you're relying on this Nano on the Fearless to really kind of get you past this checkpoint that's going to you know, pop up when these two teams kind of just stall out here in a second. Ant Matrix available. Maybe you can get a hack on this as it looks like Pelican kind of lurking in the background. Checkmate here, hoping to catch Happy. He's living dangerously. Opting into the Tracer Mirror. You'll see Fearless here as the bot's headed back to neutral now. The Nano here for Fearless. In he goes. Air Matrix thrown up, and Fearless takes no damage from it. It's not a great spot for that ability. And Fearless can just take his time. Merit with the Bionite, but he's still alive somehow. Somehow they keep him standing. Checkmate also clinging to life, but Violet finishes the job. And now the Outlaws have a player advantage to work with. It's slow going, but it's inexorable. It's erratic for Chorok here as someone is hacked up. Artillery Barrage coming in from Merit, but there's no connection. Happy. The Outlaws here running with a bit of momentum. It's a minute left in the map. Yeah, but they got to get going pretty fast here, Mitch. I mean, you're going to have a rally here for Violet. You think they get aggressive behind that ultimate? Violet here sees Fearless coming over the top, and it's Shu. Oh, Shu's taken down. Checkmate gets into the cookie jar, and they've lost their honor. Will it be a rally to stay alive? They can't do it. Is this the beginning yeah, of the end? You, you, you have to die. If you use Rally there and everybody falls, that is game over. Your best chance is to come back, get grouped up for another fight. You know the Mayhem pretty much have nothing. You can play around this Rally. I think you, you consider rallying. Do you rally first? Do you EMP first? I think that's probably what you're discussing here, coming back into that next fight. This EMP is everything. Pelican can keep his team alive. If he nails this, they're looking for him. OT. Three seconds to go and we will be in overtime. Pelican from the backside sees Merit waiting on Fearless to dive in. Here's the EMP and it comes down pretty much straight away. What's happening? Found it! Pelican's taken down! The pulse of checkmate is just too good! And now in overtime, the Outlaws fall to pieces! It's just happy to stay there! And your masters of mischief now stand as monarchs!
you think back, I mean, season one, we go all the way back. They're, they're, they're fan favorites because of the memes, right? They're walking out with palm trees. They're not winning anything. Three and 33. They're not winning anything. And to see that team come back better year after year after year, just culminate in this moment. I mean, they were the team this weekend that a lot of people thought were the favorites. And a lot of times, we don't see the favorites win, especially in Overwatch. See a lot of crazy things happen. But they had the answer for everything everybody brought to the table this weekend. This is a team that's middling for so long. But now on the gun boat, they put together the greatest team in the world. A truth now nobody can deny. Someone there in disbelief. It's a long road. These are for long seasons. Yeah. The West has never been more competitive than this year. And, and you just think about the day that he had, right? Two awards in the morning, win two matches, find himself as a champion. He could, he could end up being the MVP for all we know of the finals. I mean, uh, just a tremendous performance from the Florida Mayhem. And, if the Houston Outlaw is a really tough way to end your season, end your year. But I mean, just tremendous legendary players on their side. They just didn't have the flexibility needed to deal with what the Mayhem had. Gunver is a legacy of building incredible rosters elsewhere. He comes to the Mayhem with the same job. They invest in someone. They know he's a future champion. Merit they see is a perfect prospect to bring along. Chorong really made a name for himself on the Toronto to find. He couldn't say no. And now this team hoists the trophy. It's a weight off of his shoulders, but a heavier one in his hands. That's the glory and the honor. And the Overwatch League trophy sit in someone's grasp. <laughs> he has had the he has had the crowd by his fingers this year, man. I mean, it is so. I mean, he is just such a fan favorite player. I mean. And also, like, uh, a player that you look at Overwatch 2 is a completely new game, right? Going from 6 on 6 to 5 on 5. I mean, he embodies what the new era of tanks are. Before we go, I want to say this as the night comes. Look to the sun, look to the dawn of a new day. This from myself and Matthew Morello is in goodbye. It's to see you soon. Mitch Leslie and Matt Morello signing off. Give a round of applause for your 2023 Overwatch World Champions, the Florida Mayhem! Unbelievable stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's a heavy one. All right, all right. Come over here, guys. Come over here. If you don't mind, come close, come close, come close, come close. This is yours. This is your world championship. First up, RuPaul, if you don't mind coming over here to me real fast. Come here, buddy. All right, and of course, we have Sean Miller here as well. Sean, I know you wanted to say some words to the team and also to our amazing fans here in Toronto. Sean, the floor is yours. Toronto, thank you so much for hosting all of the fans. I don't have any more words. Let's give it up for your 2023 Overwatch League champions, the Florida Mayhem! Unbelievable stuff. Where's Coach Gumba? Coach, come over here. Come over here, Coach. Come on, guys. Come on. RuPaul, first, I want to I get you real quick, my friend. What an incredible achievement this is, not only dominating in the grand finals, but really just dominating in this entire competition. When you guys set foot in Toronto, did you feel like this was basically just a few rounds away? Uh, I think going into this, we were really confident. All year, we've practiced so many hours, so hard every day. And we have an amazing coaching staff, an amazing organization, and we're always pushing ourselves every day. So when we came here uh, this week, we knew we were going to win. They knew. Paul, my brother, congratulations. You are a world champion. Well deserved, my friend. Go back to your team. Can't get Coach Gumbo over here, please. Guys, give it up for the ma the mastermind of this whole team, Coach Gumba. Coach, my friend, first and foremost, I interviewed you yesterday. 
And, oh, watch out behind you. You don't want to knock out your brand new trophy. Come over here. We'll get a better shot right in front of the trophy. Look at that. All right. So, you told me that when you set foot here, you, you're usually nervous, you're worried, you're not concerned, but you looked me in the windows of my soul, and you told me you're going to be a world champion. So how does it feel to basically make the spoiler come true? I mean, as predicted, I knew we'd win, especially once, uh, once Atlanta was eliminated. Uh, they were the biggest challenge to us, I feel. Uh, other teams didn't have as much practice, so we knew we'd won once Atlanta was eliminated. Well, I mean, Coach, it's without a doubt this team has been uh, an incredible force in the league. Anything you want to say to the squad, but also anything you want to say to the people who came out in droves. There's a guy who flew all the way from Florida to come hang out with you all today. What you, uh, <laughs> what you want to say to them, Gumba? Actually, all of us flew out from Florida, so that's not That's fair. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's expected. Um, I want to thank the players for putting up with me. That's the most important thing. Uh, we run a really tight ship. We're hard on the players every day, and they deserve to be rewarded for that. So I'm really thankful to the players for dealing with my crap every day. Hey, man. Well, I think we're all glad to see how great this team has been. And by the way, you haven't had a chance yet, but that's yours. Go ahead and lift it up. Well deserved. Well deserved. And now it's time to announce our MVP. So, Sean, thank you so much. And let's go ahead and bring out Danny. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't hear it. So, Danny, I'm going <laughs> to rely on you for the MVP. Who is it Who is it going to be in 2023? Any guesses, Toronto? <laughs> think I heard it. 2023 Grand Finals, MVP. Finals MVP goes to Merrick. Congratulations. <laughs> Merit, you were in lights out today, and that is why you're holding that trophy. Now, I know this trophy is pretty heavy. I was holding there for five minutes. It, it, it is pretty heavy, so I'm going to make this quick. How do you feel right now being the Grand Finals MVP for 2023 season? Now, first, Grand Finals MVP, I'm going to give you a lot of praise. I'm going to give you a lot of praise. I'm going to give you a lot of praise. First, I'm going to give you a lot of 어 제가 잘했기 잘했다기보다는 그냥 저희 팀원들이 다 잘해가지고 이렇게 이겼을 수 있, 있었던 것 같습니다. I mean, it really feels great to be the Grand Finals MVP, but I feel like it's not me that really played well, but I think it is our teammates that really supported me, supported the whole team to get the win. One final question. I mean. You are the Grand Finals MVP, so I want you to say it. Merit, are you the best DPS player that we have in the Overwatch League? 자, 마지막 질문입니다. 알아들으셨죠? 알아들으셨죠? It's a simple yes or no question. I want you to say it loud and proudly, okay? 자, 크게 자신감 있게 네, 아니면 아니요로 대답을 하시면 됩니다. 자, 해주세요. 3, 2, 1, yes! Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Grand Finals MVP, Merit! And give it up one more time.